Hi there, I'm Nathan Wind, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can become John Baylor with just a few simple steps. Step one, changing your clothes. I'm going to, I'm going to change into something that I believe that you should wear while you're John Baylor. Alright, now that you have changed into your John Baylor attire, let me, let me break it down for you. It can be a dress shirt, it can be white, it can be blue, it can be purple, as long as it's a dress shirt. You have to have a tie that reaches your crotch area. Okay, that is key, key, key. And you have to either have khakis or nice dress pants like so. All right, um, you have to have your sleeves rolled up and usually he wears a watch, but I don't have one right now. My, my watch broke, so can't do that. Now, we're gonna move on to step three. All right, for step three, you have to start calling your entire audience, no matter who you're talking to, scholars. Go, you practice that. Say scholar, 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 scholar. So many times. Say scholar, scholar, scholar. Okay? You're just going to start addressing your audience as scholars. Okay? Let's practice. Do it with me here. I'm going to say it, and you repeat it. All right, future two and four year degree scholars. Good? Good. On to step four. All right, so step four. You're going to want to have your ACT prep packet always, always on hand, ready to be used, always. You know, always got to have this, always got to refer back to it, got to repeat yourself, got to repeat yourself, and you got to talk fast. Fast, I'm saying fast. Okay, now that you got step four down, let's move on to step five. All right, move on to step five. You got to say, hammer the grammar, hammer the grammar so many times. Okay, hammering the grammar. That's all that this is about. This is hammering the grammar. All right, got that down. Hammer the grammar. Move on to step six. All right, now that we've moved on to step six now, you're always going to want to look at your grammar rules. Always. Grammar rule number one, what is it? Less is more. Less is more. Let's always remember that less is more. You're always going to pick the shortest answer unless it's meh. Horrible. All right. Step seven. Honor thy commas. Honor thy commas. Always got honor thy commas. It's one thing that he always refers back to is honoring thy commas. Perfect. Step eight. All right. The last step here, scholars. I'm not stress this enough. Meh. Meh. You got to really over exaggerate in how you use it. Meh. It's not a good answer. Meh. All right. Let's try it. Let's do example. You always go with shortest answer. Unless it's meh, horrible. Toss it out, scratch it out, and go with another one. Boom. Perfect. I think we're about ready to move on and really show you how to be John Baylor. All right, scholars. Welcome to the ACT prep. I'm John Baylor, and hang with the grammar. Let's get at it. All right. So the best paying job that you could have during high school is getting your ACT score up so you can go to a two or four year college degree with minimal to no debt. All right. Turn your pack. Grab your uh, OCT ACT prep packet here. And go to the first page. Go over our grammar rules. All right, let's look at grammar rule number one. What is it? Less is more. All right? Remember that. You always have to go with the shortest answer. Because many times in grammar and reading and stuff like that, the shortest answer is usually correct. Unless it's what? Mer horrible. All right. Let's go with grammar rule 1A. Go with the shortest answer unless the shortest answer is horrible. Grammatically incorrect or, max or lacks the necessary information. Boom. Alright, grammar rule number two, my favorite, what is it? Honor thy commas. You know, you have to exaggerate the pause after every single comma, you know, just so it makes sense to you. You know, okay. Alright, let's go with an example here. Go open up your packet. Open up your packet, which is form 126.7c. Alright, turn to the first page. Which at the bottom of the page, it'll say page 14. Okay? And you want to go 
Read to the passage. I'm going to use this as an example. It slithers, it slithers through the forest like a snake curving and bending along the banks of the river. Right? You see what I did there? Like it's curving and bending. You have to get, exaggerate the pause. My dog Ellie likes to play in the snow. See? You have to exaggerate the pause. Exaggerate the pause. Move on to grammar rule number All three. right, scholars. Grammar rule number three. A full sentence has to have, what? How many components? Three. All right? Grammar rule 3a. The subject. The dog sought shelter from the storm. What's the subject? The dog. What did the dog do? The dog sought shelter. Good. Has to have a verb. Mary proudly carried her bucket of fish. What did Mary do? She carried it. What is that? That's a verb. That's an action. And third one, a complete thought. Bobby yelled. What is that? That is a complete thought. There is a subject and there is a verb with it. Bobby yelled. Boom. All right. We're on grammar rule three, CI. Dependent clauses. Clauses that begin with where, while, when, because, if, since, as, Useless, rather, until, etc. are never complete thoughts. While I was running. What? What was I doing while I was running? You know, who knows? Because it just ends there. You have to have both a dependent clause and an independent clause in a sentence. While I was running, comma, I tripped. What is that? That's a complete sentence. While I was running, comma, I tripped. That's a complete sentence. If you want to add more to that, you can, but it's, that's usually going to go with the shortest answer. Because what is that? Grammar rule number one: less is more, unless the shortest answer is rare. Horrible. All right, scholars, we're on grammar rule number four: subject-verb agreement. Subjects agree with their verbs in number, singular or plural. The butterfly is colorful. Okay. The friends are together. When solving subject verb agreement questions slash the gunk, prepositional phrases, adjectives, adverbs. All right, Excellent. scholars, pick up your pack at form 126.7c and go to passage 2 on page 16. All right. Let's try it. Let's look at it. Beneath the streets of New York. At 2 p.m. on October, at 2 p.m. on October 27th, 1904, thousands of New York City residents poured into the streets of Manhattan. All right, question 16 is there and the first sentence. Let's look at it. 2 p.m., comma, on October 27th, comma, 1904, semicolon, thousands of New York City residents. Yeah. All right, scholars, let's look at them. All right, so A, we have no change. Let's put that in there. Does it sound right? At 2 p.m., comma, on October 27th, comma, 1904, thousands. Yeah, does that sound good? No, slash it, get rid of it. All right, let's look at G. At 2 p.m. on October 27th, 1904, thousands of New York City residents poured into the streets. Because on G, we have, we get rid of the comma after 2 p.m. On October 7th, oh, uh, oops. My bad, on October 27th, we keep the comma. 1904, we get rid of the semicolon and get another comma there. And then just thousands. Okay, let's try that. At 2 p.m. on October 27th, 1904, thousands of New York City residents poured in the streets of Manhattan. Boom, does that sound right to you? Circle G. You're done. All right. All right, scholars, if you're done, you're going to go on. You're going to head on to the next video. All right, I hope these videos are helpful, and we'll see you in section 2B. Honestly, Thank guys, I believe that's video. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing, because I kind of forgot. I mean, if John Baylor had his sleeves rolled up, or if he had them down, I just decided to roll them up, because it went with the actual vibe of this video. And so, I got my grandma packets here, and you know what? What do you do? Kind of crazy.